The law behind Reva. Born in the small farming village of Oakvale, Reva always knew that he was different. He was a hero, but his village of Oakvale had been instrumental in the death of heroes and the destruction of the Heroes Guild 200 years before. He lived in the village with his family and lover. Obsessed with his own vanity, he made a deal with the Shadow Court for eternal youth, unaware that making this deal would result in the fall of Oakvale and cause the death of everyone that he ever knew and loved. For years, he would have nightmares of what he saw happen to his village. This event changed him, making him view the world differently. To maintain his youth, Reva would send someone once a year to the Shadow Judges of the Shadow Court. This ritual would take their youth and allow Reva to keep his. As a hero, Reva possessed the ability of skill, making him extremely dangerous with a gun, and over the years, he becomes known around Albion for his debauchery and sexual impropriety. Throughout his adventures, he acquired five of the six made Dragon Stomper 48 guns, four of which he had killed the previous owners. He also became a pirate, where he conquered the seas using his powers of skill and his ship, the Reaver, named after himself. One of his voyages ended with him killing the infamous Pirate King, Captain Dread, and his crew, keeping only one alive, Smiling Jack, to tell the story. With the Pirate King dead, Reaver took this title for himself. After many adventures, 200 years after his deal with the Shadow Court, the Pirate King became more impatient and vain. Noted in one example where he shot and killed Barnum, an entrepreneur in Albion, simply because a picture that he took of Reva would take three months to develop. Now residing in Bloodstone, Reva meets the hero of Bowerstone, who requests his help as the hero of skill to defeat Lord Lucian Fairfax. Unknown to the hero of Bowerstone, Lucian had placed a bounty on him. Reva uses this opportunity to trick the hero into going to the Shadow Court as the offering for that year, and when weakened after the exchange, he planned to deliver him to Lucian and collect the bounty. All of Reaver's actions, of course, motivated by self-preservation and personal gain. Lucian foils this plan and decides to try and take both heroes by force by invading Bloodstone with his shards. In a partnership of convenience, Reaver helps the hero of Bowerstone escape through the tunnels of his manor. Aware that Lucian won't leave him alone, he teams up with the other heroes, Garth, the hero of will, and Hammer, the hero of strength, where they attempt to destroy Lucian, but are ambushed and taken to the spire. They are later rescued by the hero of Bowerstone, and Lucian is defeated, allowing Reaver to continue his selfish ways. After the death of Lucian, Reva moved to Samarkand, where he later attempted to kill Garth, in which his attempt failed. Moving back to Albion years later, Reva settles into a new manor in Millfields, where he hosts extravagant parties with the elite and powerful. With the rise of the Industrial Age and the loose laws regarding employee treatment, Reva takes control of Faraday Industries after Ernest Faraday is arrested by King Logan. He changes the name to Reaver Industries, introduces child labour, reduces wages by 100%, and increases working hours. This results in him becoming a very rich man, becoming a titan in industry, and a very powerful ally to the king. Now running the majority of Bowerstone Industrial, he executes workers in public, truly showing his evil and narcissistic personality to all. During the revolution, Reaver puts his own needs first and sides with the new ruler, using the upcoming battle for Albion as a way to push his agenda to try and convince the new ruler to turn the orphanage into a house of ill repute 
and draining Bower Lake to get access to the mines beneath it, sugarcoating these as a way to help Albion, when, in reality, these actions would simply make him richer. Reaver leaves Bowerstone just before the battle for Albion to attend his annual sacrifice. Whether he comes back after the battle is unknown, and whether he still makes his annual sacrifice is unknown. Knowing his ability for self-preservation, he's probably still out there somewhere. Hey guys, thank you for watching this lore episode on Reaver. I had a lot of fun making this one, and I know you guys have been asking for it for a while. What did you think? What would you like me to cover next? As always, like and subscribe if you found this interesting. Now, enjoy your day!